it's that time of the year where we get all of the version changes for Adobe and some new updates. It happens every fall. And uh, this year's no different. We are up to Lightroom Classic version 14 and then Lightroom Desktop version 8. So what we're going to do, I'm going to change it up a little bit. We're going to cover all of the updates inside of this video. I'll start with Lightroom Classic first, and then you can always skip forward if you're interested in the Lightroom Desktop updates. Uh, you go to your Adobe Creative Cloud updater, you check for updates. I've heard sometimes people need to restart the update or maybe even restart your computer before you see them. Remember, there's millions of people that are trying to update this right now. But as always, all update questions should go to Adobe. I can show you the new features here, so let's go ahead and jump in. Now, the first feature we're going to take a look at is going to be in the develop module. It's going to be that little eraser icon. It's It's been there for a while, so this isn't the new feature. Uh, last year, I believe in May, we did get a generative remove tool in here. So we've always had a cloning and healing option. They've been in Lightroom for probably over a decade. But we got a generative remove feature inside of Lightroom. It was what they call early access. So I think that's Adobe's way of saying, don't, don't hate us if it doesn't work perfect. Like we think it's good enough to put in here, but don't hate us if it's not perfect. So it is out of early access. It is into regular prime time. And so you'll see a couple of options here. It looks a little bit different. The interface is just a tiny bit different than it was before, but we basically have used generative AI. So the, the erase tool was there. It's just, it just wasn't very good if I tried to use it on something like we have the bear over here. It just wasn't very good for it. So, but we did have an erase tool that tried to use, you know, almost a content aware uh, uh, features that used to be inside of Photoshop. So that, that's typically the results that we got. So I can't say I ever really used it that much, but when generative AI came out, it started to work better. And what you'll find now is it works even better than it did before. So the idea behind it is we'd go in here and we'd paint and you can use the right and left bracket keys uh, to go in and uh, make your brush larger or smaller to make it easier to paint with. Now, the other thing you can see that we can do, because look at what I did there. I outlined the object, but it didn't actually fill all of it in. So I'm going to cancel out of here. We'll go in here and we'll choose detect objects. And you might not always want to use that. You might just want to go in here and swipe across a small object and uh, you're done. You know, you don't need it to detect an object for you. But let's just say that you do, then you can turn on detect objects. And what it's going to do is you'll go in, you'll just do a basic outline around what you want to get in here and remove. Uh, you do have to close close the loop, but when you're done, it's going, I shouldn't say you have to close the loop. You can go ahead and brush over everything. You don't even have to uh, get in there and close it. But when you're done, it's going to make that selection for you, okay? It does leave you in a little selected area where you see add and subtract. So you can go in there and do that. By the way, the keyboard shortcut to just automatically switch to the subtract tool without pressing the button is option on Mac, Alt on PC, so I can limit the area. And I would suggest, you know, you don't want to make it perfect. You don't want to bring it right up to the edge. But then again, you don't want to necessarily leave too much space on the outside uh, for it to work from. All right, so I'll go in here and just subtract a little bit of that. And then when you're done, uh, it used to say apply, which didn't make too much sense, but now it says remove, which makes a lot more sense. And it's gonna go in there and it should do a pretty good job. Uh, one thing to, to be careful of, I, I did two things here that I didn't really talk about. One is I made sure that I brushed over the whole area. You can get some inconsistent results if you leave just the slightest little part of something there. Sometimes Lightroom thinks you wanna replace it with the same thing, so that's bad. The other thing is, I want to crop this more, but I didn't crop it as tightly as I wanted. I left a little bit of space because again, sometimes I get some inconsistent results and it brings a little bit of it back in. So this way I'm done. It removed it. It did a good job. I would normally have to go over to Photoshop for this. So for this case, I don't have to. And now I would go in here and I wanted to have it cropped a little bit tighter than it was before. Uh, so I went in there and cropped it after. I just noticed when I tried to remove the bear, and I cropped it as tight as I want, sometimes it would leave a little bit of remnants or try to replace it with something. So just gave it a little bit of extra space to work with. That's gonna be the main big feature. Uh, another feature that we have, which uh, is, is not gonna be huge, but I think a lot of you are gonna be uh, breathe a sigh of relief over it. So if you go under the file menu, you're gonna see an option here called rename catalog. 
Now, we, we've been able to rename the catalog manually. You, you had to know the secret handshake on how to get there and do it, but we've been able to do it manually. But now we have an official feature. And this is where it comes in because if you go look at your, your you know, Matt's catalog V13 new, every year when Lightroom comes out, it, it we have to update the catalog. We have to upgrade it. And what happens is, is we, we get these new iterations of the catalog that are new version 13 plus new, all this different stuff. So at least now you can come in here and choose rename catalog. Another thing that we can do here, and it's going to I don't want to say it's tied in. It's it's not necessarily a new feature, but it brings us into the exact place where I want to go to show you the next feature. Uh, before we do that, very quick word from our sponsor. So uh, if you're interested in learning more about Lightroom, I got lots of stuff for you here. So uh, number one, if you're you're fairly new to Lightroom Classic, my uh, my Lightroom system is a really good place to go. It teaches you all about catalogs, importing, organizing your photos to editing uh, those photos and using all the other features inside of Lightroom Classic. I also have a class called Evolving with Lightroom. So if you're a classic user that wants to learn more about Lightroom Desktop, because I think it's it's a very applicable workflow for a lot of people that want to shed the catalog and just work a little bit simpler, got my Evolving with Lightroom course. And then I also have adaptive presets. So these are AI adaptive presets. I've got some for wildlife. I've got some for landscape skies and portraits. So make sure I put links below to all those things. They're all on sale right now. All very easy to watch, very easy to install uh, where needed. So hope you'll swing by and check it out. Let's get back to the tutorial. Okay, I left it where I was showing you the next feature and it, it ties in a little bit with what we just talked about before, but we're gonna go under our preferences here, but not preferences, we're gonna go to catalog settings. So it's under the Lightroom menu on the Mac, it should be under the edit menu on a PC. You're gonna go to catalog settings. I'm gonna open up this, uh, this catalog settings window here. Um, so the thing that's not necessarily a new feature, but I think should help a lot of you, Go under where it tells you your location of your catalog is, click on show, and inside of there, you might see a whole bunch of old catalogs. And you might see a whole bunch of old preview files and all these different things. Look at the last time some of these, these things were created. So these can take up a lot of space. If it's not your newest catalog, you don't need it you can go in there and you can delete these things. So go in there, free up some space. I, it's, it's making me realize I need to go back in here and free up some space because there's a lot of space taken up inside of there. If you're worried, you, you really only need your latest files and you can search by what was modified today. You can look at the date. You can make sure you're working on your current catalog. Um, if you're worried about it, go take the files, move them off to an external hard drive put them somewhere else on your main computer, whatever, move them out of here. If you're worried you might screw something up, save them for a day, open up Lightroom, start using it, make sure it acts like normal, you didn't delete something you didn't want to. So if you're that worried about it, then save those files for a day or two, but then you can go in and safely delete them. You don't even have to move them to another drive, just take them out of where they are now. This is where Lightroom's going to always look for those things. Now, the other thing that's here, is previews. They've given us a different way to manage previews. Your 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 one-to-one -one previews can take up quite a bit of space, as you saw in that last window there. These are things that are generated when you zoom into a photo. They could be generated when you import the photo. It builds a one-to-one -one preview. Now, automatically discard after 30 days has been there, but they've also given us a limit to a certain size in there. So uh, you can go ahead and click on that if you wanted to go that route and click on learn more if you wanted to find out a little bit more of the details behind that. Just wanted to show you uh, that that's a new feature there. Moving on to the next one here, we'll come under the file menu. We'll go down here to export and inside export, as you scroll down, you're gonna see something and you're gonna see this pop up not only in Adobe, but it's popping up everywhere in Adobe. But you're gonna see this pop up more and more across every program that you use. And that's gonna be content credentials. This is early an early access feature in Adobe, but it's still there. What this is, is it's essentially trying to attach things. And you can see you've got a couple options here, attach to files or publish uh, to the cloud. I'd say just attach to files because this is going to be something you're going to want to include with your photo if you do need it. Um, and what it'll do is it'll put your copyright information there, any connected accounts if you've got social media, and then you can also include any edits and activity. So this is for contests. This is for whatever places you might submit photos to. 
that want to number one, know that this is your photo, know that it wasn't created by AI. Um, maybe even certain edits that you do to the photo that might not be allowed for a contest. So again, you're going to see this pop up over and over. Is it foolproof? No, but this is for the honest person that wants to try to include as much as they can to, sh to show that they're being genuine in what is done to their photo. Okay, so the next features are gonna be inside of the Lightroom version of Lightroom, not Lightroom Classic. This is the desktop version. Um, keep in mind, I'm, I'm gonna show you some features here. I, I'm not trying to get everybody to convert over to Classic. I think it can be useful for some people, but they did add this local feature a year ago. And I, I don't think there's anybody watching this that can't use this at some point. Everybody's got the need to look at a folder of photos without importing it into a catalog first. And this lets you browse things and even do some quick edits. Anyway, keep that in mind. I encourage everybody, at least check it out. Uh, we'll come over here into the album section and the first feature, click on the little plus icon over there. It's gotta be in the cloud section, okay? It's only gonna be in the cloud album section. Click on the plus icon and you'll see we can create a smart album now, which is a lot like a smart collection inside a classic. I'll call it my smart album. And then just like our collections inside a classic, a smart album is something you give criteria to. A, a collection or an album is something you add photos to. And a smart album, we give it certain criteria. So I'll say five star photos get put into this smart album. Hit create. And so you can see if I go to one album over here, I go click on the smart album, only five star photos got added into there. Okay, and that will continue to happen where albums you put photos into, smart albums automatically manage themselves. You don't have to do anything to add and remove photos from them other than do something to a photo that has that criteria of five stars in it. So if I remove a five star photo, it'll get removed from that smart album automatically. If I add it, it'll automatically get added. Okay, the next one is gonna work uh, pretty much anywhere inside of Lightroom. We can go click on a photo. You've gotta be in the detail view. You can just press E for edit to look at a photo, but they're gonna be preset changes and pretty good ones too. So what we're able to do here is just open up a preset category and you'll see it gives you thumbnails. Now it used to just give you a list. All right, now it actually gives you thumbnails and you can hover over those thumbnails. You can see it change, but it gives you a little bit of a preview inside of there. Um, if you don't like that, or for some reason it's, it's just not what you want, you can switch it back over into list mode and it'll change back to the old list that was there. Uh, next thing we can also do is we can favorite a preset. So you can click on the little star icon in the top right corner of a preset. And then what you'll be able to do is always refer back to that, okay, that'll be included back in your favorites. So if you go to yours, and you'll see over here under favorites that it's listed inside of there. Next one inside of there is if I press G for grid, and I'm looking at a bunch of photos, I can shift click to select a bunch of photos, and then I can go in and I can add a preset. So it's essentially batch adding a preset. You're not gonna get previews because it can't give you a preview, but it's a, it's a way to go in there and batch uh, some of those presets. Last one is if you go into that little pop-out menu for your presets, there is a single group mode because you can keep opening up these presets. It's a little bit like solo mode. You can keep opening up these presets and it'll take up a lot of space. So single, uh, single group mode only allows one group of presets to be open at a time. All right, another good feature here is going to be, let's go grab a photo here to edit. So I'll go click on this one. This is gonna be a big crowd pleaser. We can now go under the file menu, go down to edit in. Uh, I've already done it once before, but if you go to browse, you can browse to third party plugins. So I've already edited this in Topaz Photo AI. So Topaz gets remembered in that list there. So I can click on that and then it's gonna pop open a window for me. So there's a couple of things you're gonna make sure you wanna do here. Uh, make edits, save changes, return to Lightroom. Uh, we'll go ahead, we'll click open photo, Topaz Photo AI. And it says, be sure your photo is saved. So when, when Topaz opens, I'm gonna show you just a couple of things that you're gonna wanna do as it uh, edits the photo. I'm not really gonna do much to the photo, other. I'll just click sharpen. Uh, we won't make this a Topaz tutorial. We'll just make it all about Lightroom. So I'll go click on export image at the bottom here. So what you're gonna do is number one, you wanna make sure there's no prefix or suffix. So you essentially want to preserve the file name. So that's the first thing. The second thing you have to allow overwriting. And I know it sounds scary, but remember I came in here with a raw file. I know it says it will overwrite the original file. It won't because 
there's not a TIFF file that exists there. It was a raw file to start with. I suppose if there was already a TIFF, it will overwrite it, but um, that should be expected. Then you wanna save it to the original folder because you want it to appear. Remember, we're browsing folders. You want it to appear in the same place that this original photo is from, and then you preserve the input format. Okay, then we'll go in there and click on save. So it's gonna go through the process of saving this photo. And then the only trick that might be a little bit different than you're used to is we'll close Topaz when it's done saving. So we'll just close this window and we'll actually close Topaz altogether. When we get back to Lightroom, we just have to click on finish. All right, so don't dismiss that window beforehand, before you go and do something to your photo. We'll just click finish and you'll see here, it went in and it created, there's the TIFF file, and then there is my raw file next to it. So uh, we're able to edit in your third party applications if that's the way to go. Uh, I would always suggest, I, I still don't like this workflow. I still would suggest it's always better, bring the file into Photoshop first. Even if you're not gonna do any Photoshop things to it, make a copy of the layer, Go to the filter menu in Photoshop, run your fit, run your, your, your adjustments on it. That way you get the masking and all the Photoshop tools if you ever want to adjust it. This doesn't give you a lot of flexibility. Same way in Lightroom Classic. I never use third-party plugins in Classic uh, because I prefer the Photoshop workflow and it only takes a couple of extra seconds. Uh, so I think that's, uh, that's definitely worth it. Lightroom on the desktop also got the same generative erase features that Lightroom Classic has. I'll go ahead and put a little time code in case you happen to skip past it the first time. You can go watch that. There's no reason to redo it. They're the exact same features and pretty much interface. Also, if you're a Lightroom user, chances are you probably use Photoshop too. So I'm going to put a link here. I did a video on the latest Photoshop updates. It's free. And if you're looking for a little bit more, you can go watch that one next.